Yeah, um, is this working? Yeah. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to uh, share the work we are doing. Um, first, I will do a short introduction of myself. Um, I work in the ECB, I work as a system developer, and I have done that for more than 15 years with the SDMX systems. I used to work in the National Bank of Denmark, and I have also been working for the OECD and for the Central Bank of Ireland, also with SDMX systems. So this is kind of my, my home field. XPL is more a new area for me. Uh, <clears throat> this is a um, work we are doing, and this work is not finished yet. We are still uh, in, in the process of, of doing this mapping. And this presentation only contains a very, very little of this uh, work we are doing, just for the mapping uh, we are doing between the data point model and the um, SDMX. Um, and this is important. This is the data point model from the EPA we are working on, and it's not XPL in general. We would like to do that in the near future, but we have started with the data point model from the EPA because it's more concrete, and this is what most of the central banks are working with now, and they kind of need this kind of mapping to, uh, and want them because they need it in their systems. I was here yesterday also, and I think, for instance, maybe every five or 10 minutes, I heard the name blockchain. I can assure you, I will not mention blockchain in my presentation, it's not a part of that. Um, I also listened to John Turner yesterday, and he came with a report from the future, I think it was 2032 or something like that, and he didn't mention blockchain in that presentation, as I remember it. He talked about a new version of XPL in the future, but the big uh, talk of the town was that somebody was, some of the organizations were still using the version 2.1. And I think this is also how I look, how I look at the future. Um, in, in, I, I, I see changes, but not big changes. Um, we start with a definition of microdata versus macrodata, and this is a definition from the Interagency Group on Economics and Financial Statistics. So you can, of course, extend this kind of ex um, description, but this is uh, how uh, they define the aggregated data, disaggregated data, microdata, and granular data. And if, if you look at the definition of these, we also see the difference where STMX and XPL are used. STMX is mostly used on aggregated data and some disaggregated data, and XPL is mostly used on granular data and microdata and also disaggregated data. This doesn't mean that you cannot use STMX, for instance, on microdata. You can do that, but it goes beyond the definition of what STMX was supposed to be used for. But of course, you can implement dimensions and so on that will be able to, to handle microdata. And why do we want to bridge these two data exchange models? In the SDMX community, we have a roadmap called 2020, and we have a lot of different goals in, in that uh, roadmap. And one of them is the interoperability between the uh, different standards. So this work we have uh, started now and that will continue until 2020. Um, we have, as maybe some of you know, we have other um, work in the ECB. We have the SM cube, this is kind of a cube that bind the SDMX and XPL to each other that you are able to define a collection and then you can collect that data in XPL or in, in SDMX. But we don't have the mapping between these two standards uh, directly. We, we get a lot of um, uh, reports from different organizations, and a lot of these organizations, especially the central banks, are starting using XPL for the last few years, and they, in their system, uh, would like to be able to map and be easier for them to collect data in one of these formats and then map it to the other. And this work is done together with Banco de España um, um, uh, for, the, for the data fund model. <coughs> Um, I don't know, how many of you know SDMX, have worked with SDMX? Okay, a few, not many. Um, 
So I will give a very short introduction to the SDMX model. Um, this is an overview of the organization. Uh, you have, I don't know where the point is. Maybe you cannot. Ah, yeah, okay. You have uh, seven organizations. That's uh, the sponsors for, for the SDMX. And you have a secretariat here that you have represented from, from one of the organizations, from one of each. And then here you have the, a technical uh, kind of uh, working group for, for the uh, SDMX. And here you have the statistical working group. Um, I am in the technical working group as a system developer. And I have been there since the group started in 2011. And my colleague, Satina Hofmeister, who is also a part of this presentation, but doing it next week at the global conference in Ethiopia, she's working in the uh, statistical working group, who is working with mostly the content area of the STMX, standard code list, concepts, etc. And this is a extract from the STMX.org website. Um, and uh, STMX stands for Statistical Data and Meta Exchange. And this is an international initiative that, that aims to standardize the mechanisms for, for collecting data and processing data. And it's sponsored from, from these uh, seven organizations that you see here. The STMX model, in more details, is Basically, basically um, dimensions, uh, and dimensions is made of uh, concepts and code lists. So you have here concepts and code lists. A concept is more like a label telling what this dimension contains, and the code list is like uh, containing um, the values of, of, of that, uh, what that dimension can take. In XPL, that would be the same as a domain and member and members. And we also have reference metadata uh, where we uh, can add information about contacts, etc., for, for a, a specific uh, domain. Um, <coughs> attributes we use a lot in, in STMX. Uh, attributes is telling something about the data point, decimals, unit, unit multiplier, etc. That's something that is not a part of a dimension that defines the data point. In STMX, we have different formats. Uh, we have um, for, uh, I mean, STMX is made for, for uh, automated uh, communication like push and pull. And the, 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 the format we, we normally use is XML, uh, which we have, we call STMXML. We have also JSON, which we use for exchanging. Everything here is exchanged by web services. And JSON is also exchanged by web services. And this is used for kind of visualiza visualization of uh, data on websites, etc. Um, the XML is more used for ex dissemination of data between the organizations. CSV is also, it's, I think the CSV is in the second or third public review, but is being finalized, uh, if not the end of this year, then the, the beginning of, of next year, uh, which is a way of also exchange in data in, in, in a very easy way because SDMX is kind of um, cube based uh, with this dimension, so it's very easy to exchange data with uh, CSV. JSMIS is the old format. Today it's called SDMX EDI. And from John Turner, who mentioned that in the future they will still be using 2.1 of the XPL version. I think I can tell you that uh, JSMIS is still being used even though STMXML has been on the market for since, I think, 2003. The data point model for XPL. Um, it's data point is uh, in, the, in the same way as in, in STMX an individual uh, data requirement. And it's, it's, it's uh, kind of measured by a metric, which characteristic is um, the nature of the measure to be performed. It's like a data type. 
it contains data type and a period of time, for instance, monetary and stock or flow or something like that. A set of dimensional characteristics, which is the same we have in, in SDMX, and a time reference that helps to specify the, the instant of the internal time of, of, the, of the data point. Um, the main differences between SDMX and XBL, the, the, the data point model, is that in the, the entity identification in, in XBL, you have an entity identification as part of the, um, of the data point model. Uh, in the um, SDMX, we don't have that. We don't have an entity. When the um, central banks collect data, they collect data from different entities, but when they uh, disseminate the data to the uh, to ECB or OECD or any other organization, it's aggregated data, so you, you miss the information about the entity. In the SDMX, we have uh, frequency for each data point, uh, as normally as one of the first dimensions. It doesn't have to be like that, but we normally have a first dimension that's the frequency quarterly, monthly, daily. You don't have that in, in XPL. And the use of dimensions is very different. Not very different, but different. Uh, in SDMX, it's very strict. If we have a, um, a, a data structure, uh, a, a definition of a domain, for instance, a balance of payment with 16 dimensions, we expect that all 16 dimensions are used in any case. We don't normally have dimensions that is not used. Um, we have matrix versus measure dimensions. Matrix, as I mentioned before, is more uh, telling something about a data type and a period of time. We don't have that in STMX, but we have something called measure dimensions, uh, which normally we have one measure dimension, which is the primary dimension, but we can also have multiple di measure dimensions, but we can only have one primary dimension. In XPL, or the data point model, you have a graphical uh, presentation of the data. You have uh, X, Y, Z axis, and in that way you can, as we normally see from the uh, EBA, have different uh, Excel sheets kind of visualization in, uh, how the schema would look like. In XPL, you have validation rules. We don't have that in SDMX, but we are working on that. In the uh, technical working group, uh, we have something called VTL, uh, which is a transformation uh, language, which will be, it's, it's, it's not done for STMX entirely, it's done like a general kind of validation um, um, transformation uh, language, but we will also implement that in STMX. So for now, we are working on schemas, that's the main problem, we need to have some schemas that implement uh, this language so we are able to exchange this data via, via uh, our registries. In SDMX, we use attributes a lot uh, to define a data point. As I mentioned before, we use uh, attributes to uh, specify a, a data point, uh, what the unit are, unit multipliers, a title, attributes, um, and we can do that on different levels. We can do it on a data point, we can do it on a data structure, or we can do it on a data flow. So we can do it on different, le different levels, uh, these attributes. I will jump to this first because I think these, I have two slides here that comes in, a, in the wrong uh, way. Um, our case study is we have, we have considered if we should do this mapping in, in both directions. We could probably do so, but, uh, but there will be some issues in relation to the attributes from the, from the SDMX. So for now, we are just modeling this uh, from the deep data point model to, to SDMX. And we have taken the uh, EBA um, C0502. It's one table that we have taken from the data point, and then this table belongs to a table group with, with more tables, and I will show you now that what consider considerations you have to do when you do such a thing. Uh, one table is like a uh, sheet in a spreadsheet. So if we take one sheet or one table, we, uh, the, the process for that is that we have almost all dimensions used. There are some cases where we don't have, I'll come back to that later. 
but there are some situations where some of the dimensions is not used. The, the problem with that is that we will have a lot of data structure definitions, domains. So, um, for instance, if we take one table within the um, core uh, data point, or the, the, the core of uh, taxonomization, uh, we will have, I think, more than 100 uh, data structure definitions. So, I mean, but that's a consideration you have to do. You can also take table groups. Uh, this table C0502 belongs to a table group. And if you take them all, uh, then you would probably have uh, fewer data structure definitions, but you will have many more dimensions that we need to disable. I'll come back to disable, or what I mean by that. And you can also take the whole core into one data structure defi definition, but then you, uh, you would have, uh, yeah, I don't know how many, but really many, 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 many dimensions that you need to disable. But there's actually some organization that likes to have one data structure definition for all their collections, uh, even though some of the big ones, uh, IMF for instance, uh, and then they would like to create data flows, uh, a subset of data uh, for each of them and then disable dimensions. In the um, case study we have done, um, you can see here a table how we have tried to map uh, the data point model for, for, for this specific uh, table. First of all, in the first row, we have the frequency for SDMX uh, here. And you don't have the frequency, as I mentioned earlier, in the XPL uh, model. So we don't have anything here for the XPL, but here we will create, we need to have a frequency for, 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 for our, uh, when we collect data in SDMX. Um, you have the dimension here for XPL, and that's um, the same as in SDMX uh, a dimension here. In the, uh, in the XPL, we have a metric which contain two information, actually. And as I mentioned before, it's contained a data type and a period of time. And we have now modeled that into one dimension. But you, I mean, there's no, there's no, um, the arithmetic here is that one plus one is not two. I mean, one plus one is six or something like that because you could actually model this metric into two dimensions if you want to, or maybe one dimension and one attribute. So there's no golden rule of how to do this. This is just how we did it because it's simpler. You have a domain in the, um, in the XPL and we have a, the same as the code list and you have the member for, for that domain and we have code values and attributes in SDMX really does not exist in XPO. We can create uh, some decimals and so on, but you don't have the attributes in the same way at, as we have in uh, SDMX. The good thing about this data point model from EBA is that we can visualize uh, the table I was talking about before. This is the C0502 table. It's one sheet in an Excel sheet. And you can see here, this is a, the, the dimensions we have up here, which goes directly as a dimension in SDMX. You have the codes here that define the values for one of these data points here. Um, and you have here, you have dimension. This is the uh, metric, and this is another base um, that uh, dimension from, from uh, XPL that we also model into a, a, a dimension. And what you can see here is that places where there's a red cross, this is where we have an issue in relation to SDMX because for these data points, <coughs> for, for this data point here, you don't have a value for this dimension. And in SDMX, we like to have a value for each dimension. So we have to do something about this. And here also, so this is the issues we have and down here. So if we model this table into our SDMX, you'll see here that the frequency is not available in the, um, in the XPL, but the concept MCI, we, we model into 
we model into MCI, and for the, for the others, we, we model directly into, and here you have the metric. We, we simply model that into one dimension we call my metric. And then we had the last one, I think I go back here. We had this last one down here where you don't have anything at all for, for all these dimensions, uh, for, for all these uh, values. Uh, so in, in this case, we, we simply just create as a dimension also. But this is just how we have done it. And in the document we are writing, we, we don't say that this is, this is one plus one is two. We, we, we just give this as an example. And we also tell that there's other ways of doing it and try to explain how you can also do it and how the pros and cons are. But we are not finished with that document. This is just a study case in, in, the, in the first. So if you take the example of um, a value here and take the, val the dimensions here and the values and you take down here the um, metric and here you have the base that is missing here. So if you should create a data point in STMX for this specific one, we will do it like this and we will create a data point like this, and we, now I have M here, I think that for, for the, uh, I think this should have been a Q because I think this uh, table or this uh, program is reported every quarter uh, or something like that, so our frequency here would be a Q. And then we have, actually here we have created uh, the values of, of uh, these dimensions. And what is important here is to see that here in the last one, if you go back again here, for, for this BAS, we didn't have a value, so we need to tackle that in, in some way. And right now, like we do, and we have some global data structure definitions, uh, like balance of payments, uh, there are situations where we need to, to give this value, um, a data point here, minus Z, which simply just means that this is not applicable. Um, and this is the only way we can, we can tackle this situation, but this is already done in our global uh, data structure definitions. There are, as I said earlier, in the community of STMX, uh, organizations that would like to disable uh, dimensions, and this would be another solution uh, how to solve this problem. If you would probably maybe create a data structure definition for um, a table group, and then you will create data flows for each of these um, tables, and then you would be able to disable di uh, dimensions. But this is something that we have a draft of the STMX version 3.0 from one of the, lot of the discussions we have had in the technical working group in the, and in the statistical working group. And this is something that could be uh, a part of this. We, we will have to wait and see how this ends up. So, I mean, the summary is there's not a direct uh, mapping between SDMX and, and the data point model. We, you need to really uh, to, to cut a toe or do different decisions, consideration uh, how to make the, the different implementation. And one implementation from one company can be taking the same table or table group or co-rep can be very different from another organization uh, depending on their system they have. Uh, so it doesn't have to be one-to-one. -one. Uh, as I said earlier, we have not finished this work yet. It will end up in a, a document describing this. And <clears throat> up to 2020, we will work uh, more directly uh, towards uh, mapping the XBL in general and not only the data point model. But the data point model was a good start because this is something very concrete and this is something a lot of the central banks are using and reporting today and this is something that would be very helpful for them. I think that's all I had to say about this. Ola, thank you very much because it actually touches on one of these points uh, which concern in general the understanding of data. How do we describe the data? How do we understand it? And furthermore, how can we analyze the data? So as you can see from the perspective of statistics where SDMX is heavily used for time series analysis and from the perspective of supervision where the DPM methodology is particularly used for uh, grouping, describing the data sets such as uh, CoREP, FinRep, etc. 
there is a possibility to actually put a bridge between these and therefore make a bit more efficient analysis going forward. Can I ask you one question? Um, a lot of that is modeling and abstract modeling and theoretical modeling. Where do, when do you think this kind of bridging can be practically applied for analytical supervision, for statistical macro uh, analysis and micro analysis in the actual central banks around the world? Tomorrow? I mean, it's, it's not... Really? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not uh, rocket science or anything. It, it's, it's simply just sitting down and, and, de and decide how you want to map it. I mean, this mapping here you could implement tomorrow if you wanted to. In the, in the ECB, we have something called SMQ, which is uh, mapping uh, STMX and XPL into one cube. It's not directly mapping between these two standards, but it's mapping these two into a, a, a cube that is defined from knowing what XPL is and knowing what, what STMX is, and then creating a model that's kind of taking the best uh, from, from both models, but, but not a direct mapping. And we're using that uh, today to, to uh, create the uh, STMX and XPL, uh, so I mean, it, it's it's not, it's just sit down and do it. Uh, I know, I mean, I've been a system developer for, for, for many years and worked with STMX systems for, for 15 years, and I know that you get something on paper, it's paper is really easy to write something on, when, when you're in the machinery and you try to implement it, yeah, that's where you, you, you get the, uh, the problems uh, that maybe was not on the, on the paper, and, and you see the real problems. But I mean, I don't see any um, big kind of problems trying to implement that. Uh, now it's it's uh, it's not that difficult. Thank you, Ola. Any questions, Daniel? The second statement, uh, different decisions, considerations have to be made in different implementations. Uh, as of today, within your organization is participating in the BERT project with some banks and they are addressing the same kind, some part of the objectives of that group is mapping PPM film rep to somewhere. Mm. Uh, do these teams take the same decisions and considerations or are they in parallel and perhaps are taking different ones? No, they're parallel. I mean, we, uh, it's some of the same persons are involved in this also, so it's, it's, uh, it's a parallel uh, kind of. It's parallel and, and converging or parallel and just not, because parallel means can mean different things. We, you reach to a consensus on how to do it. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we will reach a consensus on how to do it. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then? Thank you very much. Uh, is um, the dictionary you set in SDMX available for the public in order that everybody, everywhere, the academy or uh, investors or whatever are able to to obtain the meaning of the information published of, on SDMX. Yeah. <clears throat> you are commenting uh, how to define the um, time series in SDMX and uh, how to characterize each component. Is this information available for the public? At, at least the, the uh, central banks would like to, to have this document, but it's not a uh, confidential document or anything. So it will be available when, when we have done the job, when we have done the work. <coughs> the question is that um, in, in XBRL, and the next uh, summit is in Paris, and SDMX is uh, next week in Addis Abeba, Ethiopia. Uh, probably this reflects the different approach 
how XBRL and SDMX is governed. That in turn have impact in the companies, in the public and whatever. And I think, I don't know how to solve this situation because they, they, they feel, for, personally, I feel that there are two parallel universes. One universe in XBRL that is working with a model of fundraising, a model of governance, a model of transparency, and SDMX that is absolutely different. And how to link both, maybe that the problem of direct mapping is how to direct map organizations in which one is meeting in Paris, open for everybody, and the other is meeting in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, basically for uh, uh, civil servants. How to organize a mapping between these two universes? Thank you. Well, if you permit, I'll add to this question, because as, a, uh, um, as I serve on the board of directors of XBL International, I think that part of Ignacio's question is going, I think your presentation focuses on the technological mapping and so on, and more, more of the in Ignacio's question, as I understand it, goes towards the governance and bridging the two groups of experts wor working on SDMX and on XBRL, and at the same time making SDMX developments more open and public to the, uh, more open to the public. Uh, so I see it as two different, so to say, layers. Uh, technologically, we are converging already. We are, we, there are, there is the SMQ developments, there is this development, before there was the Jagger database, and so on. So I see that there are a lot of initiatives going towards bridging the standards. Uh, perhaps you would like to comment on this governance aspect and whether you see this possible to bring the groups together maybe and consider some common forums uh, for discussing the time series models and the DPM models jointly? This is the chat and rules, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, but I, I'm not really involved on, on the governance aspect of, of, of this, but, uh, and I don't know if, if um, it's, it's different people sitting in the different uh, areas and uh, not to be too pessimistic, but I am afraid that it's not that easy just to um, to get this uh, because I think that the, um, uh, uh, let me say in another way, the, the reason why this is done now is because I think I don't think this would have been necessary if the, for instance, the, we, we have now the single um, supervision mechanism, and, uh, the SSM uh, within the uh, central banks, uh, reporting to ECB and reporting to to EPA in that direction, and this started this whole kind of thing of of mapping uh, these two standards. Um, so in that perspective, I think that it's it's needed, uh, but I'm not sure that uh, it's something that going to, to happen within the, the, in the near future. But uh, maybe I'm too pessimistic, I don't know. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Ole. And um, if you permit, we've changed the agenda, as you know. We, so we adjust, ad ad adapted uh, in an agile way to the fact that, first of all, I made the mistake and you don't start a conference in Spain at 8.30 in the morning. Um, which we 